Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Rosie. So I'm jumping in here at the beginning because I say in my intro like, it's the very next day because I thought I was gonna put this part of the vlog on the last vlog that you might have seen that got posted on Friday. Um, I didn't remember that. <laughs> and also there's actually a story time I'm gonna add at the end about getting food poisoning. So if you want to stay till the end, you can watch that as well. But I just thought I'd post this as kind of its own separate video because I forgot to post it on the last video, but it'll still make sense. It's still a nice look around Gaul in Sri Lanka. So enjoy the video and I'll be back at the end to tell my food poisoning story. Okay, so it's the very next day. I know this vlog is a little bit all over the place, but I wanted to talk to you today because we're going to a cathedral, St. Mary's maybe. I'll let you know when we get there. <laughs> but we're currently crossing a bridge over the railway tracks and I thought I would show you. So we've just come from down there. Our apartment is basically just behind this building and we're just crossing over the railway bridge. So I thought I would show you that little view. I think it's cute. And then we're going this way to go towards the cathedral. Okay, we just basically had to hike up a hill <laughs> to now come back down. It's nice to see different streets in a different part of the town. So we're now going down here and it is St Mary's Cathedral, should be somewhere on the right, I think, or maybe on the left, I'm not sure. So we're just walking past this school and it's interesting because there's barbed wire outside and it's also so, so dirty, like you can see all the stuff there. So here's another look at the school. Interesting. We're now walking down this way, but the church is literally there, it's this blue building, so I'm pretty sure we'll get, we've just gone the wrong way. Never mind, we'll get there at some point. Okay, we've made it to the church. We didn't have to go all the way back, which is good. So the school is just there. We literally just came up the long side underneath and we were able to come back round. But this is the gardens of the church, lots of palm trees, also some gravestones, and that's round the back. So we're now going to walk around the front. Okay, then this is the front of the church. It's interesting with such a kind of varied history with the um, Portuguese and the Dutch and the English. It's interesting they have churches, but they also have um, temples for Buddhism and I think probably Hinduism and people are Muslim as well here. So anyway, this is the church built in 1874. Gorgeous exterior there. Okay, so this is the inside of the church. Next year it's going to be 150 years old, so quite an old one, but it's still standing. There's this lovely peach colour inside. I love these archways. Mm. So there's no one else here at the moment, just me and Jeremy. It's nice and calm. But it's currently 10 to 4. We came out a bit early today because Jeremy's got a call at half five. It's so hot. I don't think you can even tell how much I'm sweating. Like, can you hear that? Oh yeah, up close you can see. It's just so hot. <laughs> Sorry for the close-up of my sweat then, by the way. That's probably rude, but it's so bloody warm. I don't think I've ever been anywhere this hot before in my life. So I've put you on wide angle, but here's a little view of the gardens from the church itself. church we're about to go down the hill so I thought I'd give you one last look put you on wide angle so you can see the whole thing so just walking down the hill and Jeremy saw this tree and he's looking at it I'm like what are you looking at all the nests and I don't know if you can tell but like that for example is an ant's nest there's another one there's another one there's another one and it's like these balls you can see all the ants on it and they kind of collect all the leaves together with the web or something I don't know I don't know how they do it but there's all these ants' nests. There's another one, and there's another one, and there's another one. So it looks like a normal tree until you look close, and then you're like, oh, yeah, gross. <laughs> anyway, we're now gonna walk back down here into town a little bit. 
So I've just come down to the bottom of the hill and I thought I would show you the view because I think that would have been a like more <laughs> impressive and a nicer way to come up to the church. So if you're coming to St Mary's Cathedral, definitely come in the main entrance, not the back entrance like we tried to do. But it's definitely more impressive and more beautiful. Anyway, we've decided we are going to, it looks like I'm crying, like that's just sweat. Oh my God. We've decided we are going to walk around the fort walls. We did a little bit of it the other day. Um, I think that was in this vlog, might have been the other vlog. Um, but I think we're gonna start at one end and walk all the way around because we've not done that yet. So that should be nice. So we heard this music you can probably hear now. And we were like, oh, okay, what's over there? And there's like a market with like clothes either side and then plants in the middle. So a little bit of a strange combo, but anyway, we're just looking around. So I thought I would show you a little bit as well. There's clothes over there and then plants in the middle here. I'll show you on the other side and then clothes again on the other side. Oh, there's someone selling ice cream. Might be tempted. Oh, passion fruit ice cream. Sounds delicious. So you can see there's clothes here for sale. And there's more like bags and things there. And then this side, they're selling plants. All different types of plants, all different sizes, and no idea what most of them are, to be honest. So we're walking towards this side of the fort, like the left hand side, and I'm sure you can hear that music. That wakes us up every morning at about half seven, probably something like that. 6 30, 7 30, 8 30. 6 30, 7 30, 8 30. This bakery comes around and wakes us up. So Jeremy's like, I'm gonna fucking murder that man. <laughs> so there's a beach here, with lots of boats. And then this guy is talking to us. Um, there's more boats, and we're gonna go up this way and walk around the fort. Okay, and this is where the fish market is. This is one we came to to get the tuna fish with the owner of our Airbnb. So obviously during the day it looks like this, but in the morning it is hustling and bustling with lots of people selling lots of fish and people buying them as well. So it's interesting to see the contrast compared to how it was the other day. So I've come to the next beach over and it's just full of fishing boats. And the man whose boat was on the other boat, on the other beach, sorry, said that people leave in the afternoon, they fish all night and then they come back in the morning to sell the fish. So you can see them getting ready to leave, they're packing up their stuff. And it's absolutely full of fishing boats. So I'm going to leave a screenshot on screen here of where we are because we've kind of come to a jetty. Um, so just for reference, if you ever want to come here, this is where we are. And we've walked along there Jeremy's watching this guy swimming there. I'm not sure if he's fishing or just living his life. I don't know. <laughs> Jeremy's watching him. Um, and then this is the jetty and there's people fishing here. You get nice views over the beach as well. And then behind that guy, I'll try and show you. Back there you can see all of the... Well, actually you can see the church that we went to in the background. And then you can see all the boats on the shore and they're getting ready to leave. So I think this could be a really cool spot to sit and watch them go when they do go. I'm not sure what time they leave, but... So this is the Gaul or Gal Maritime Museum. I'm not sure we're going to go in, but if you want to, that is there. Okay, so we're not going to walk around the walls. I lied to you earlier. No, I didn't lie. We've just changed our plans. We're instead just walking through the middle because Jeremy's got his call, like I said, very, very soon. So we want to make sure that we have enough time to get back so he's not late for it, basically. So we're just walking around the um, roads, I guess. And I thought I'd show you a little bit. So this is one of the shops here, lots of like touristy things. And you can get leather bags. But it's really, really cute, really cute um, town. There's also jewelry shops as well. There's one there. So this road in particular I think is really cute with the yellow building here and the corner shop there. But like, look at the balcony, <laughs> completely broken. But yeah, it's a little look to the old town of Gaul or Gala. Okay, so it's so interesting walking around here because it is so different to the other part of town where we're staying. Like this part is full of jewelry shops and like posh boutique hotels and like restaurants and ice cream shops and it's like so touristy and also touristy shops selling like masks and um, souvenir stuff, like elephant stuff. 
and it's just so interesting how it's so different to like where we're staying because where we're staying is obviously where the locals live and it's just it seems like a completely different place doesn't it and same as last time we came here like we don't see any white people where we are and then we come here and it's like it's full of them obviously us included like we're white people <laughs> but it's just interesting that i think i don't know it's not a bad thing i think it's just that people go where they feel safe don't they and if that means like a posh hotel and like in the touristy area then that's fine but it's just i think you're only seeing one part of what gaul or gal actually is like you're seeing the touristy section rather than where the locals live so it's, it's not a bad thing it's just different but yeah always find that interesting anyway we're now going to walk back because jeremy's got his call so i'll chat to you when we get back okay we've come to the top of the fort where the light the lighthouse no it's a clock <laughs> we've come to where the clock is but we're basically overlooking the cricket field and some of the fort and the buildings and the town and quite a cool spot i said to jeremy i've been saying for a while i want to walk around the whole wall so maybe we do that tomorrow because i really want to do it but this is my current view so that's in the fort there you can see the roundabout where people are going in and out of the fort there's the cricket grounds and then jeremy's over there and this is the view from where jeremy just was there's a drone there so we have to get jeremy to fly his drone at some point but anyway this is the view of the fort this side that's where we watched sunset the other day, overlooking that hotel. There's some people here playing football. And then over there you can see the bus, that's the cricket grounds. That's the bus station there. The railway station's behind here. So this is the beach we were at earlier, the second one. because I think so, yeah, because the first one was around there a little bit. This is the second one and you can see they're getting ready to leave to go off fishing. Okay, so I'm back. I'm gonna be talking about sick and diarrhea. So if you don't wanna watch that, feel free to click away now. But I thought I would tell you a little bit of a story about food poisoning that we got in Sri Lanka. Jeremy's working next to me, so you might hear the keyboard tapping. There's also a woman outside talking on the phone, on the speakerphone, which is perfect, but I can't, I don't wanna go out and be like, shh. And I also don't wanna wait forever for everyone else to be quiet. So we're gonna just crack on with it, but you might have seen the last vlog where we bought some tuna from this nice fisherman guy. Um, we had it the first day and it was fine. No problems, no issues. Put it in the fridge and then had it again the next day. And then Jeremy, as he was cooking it, absolutely no problems, absolutely fine. And we started eating it and I thought it had a bit of a funny taste. And Jeremy said, oh, it might taste a little bit burnt because the pan I was using was already burnt. And I was like, okay, fine. That kind of explains a little bit of the metallic taste that we were eating. Um, and then as we started eating, my lip, like on, like on the inside here, just in the middle of this section, started feeling like it was swelling. And I've never had this sensation before whilst eating. And I was like, is my lip swelling? And Jeremy was like, no, you're fine. And I was like, it feels really weird. And he was like, honestly, it's fine. And then after like a couple more minutes, a couple more minutes, I was like, it really does feel like it's swelling, Jeremy. So he took a photo of me and we were like, okay, we'll check back in 10 minutes, see if my mouth has swollen more. Like I've never had an allergy to fish before. I've always eaten tuna and been absolutely fine. So I kept just sort of like touching my lip the whole time. Like it just felt like it was swelling, but physically it didn't change. It just looked the same. So then once we finished the meal, pretty much as soon as we finished, I was like putting the plates to the kitchen to wash them. I all of a sudden got a cracking headache and I was like, oh my God, I feel really bad. Where has my headache come from? This is not fun. And then still Jeremy was like, no, I think you're fine. Like it's probably just, because the thing was with me is that when I have something wrong with me, I'm then like a hypochondriac and I make everything worse and worse and worse. So if I'm ever in hospital for like get my teeth out or anything, I'll end up having to stay longer than planned because my, my brain is like, oh my God, you're in hospital. You're really like something wrong with you. So I get worse symptoms. So Jeremy was like, I'm sure it's just that. I'm sure you're fine. I went upstairs and had a painkiller for my headache and an antihistamine for my swollen lip that wasn't swelling, but I felt like it was swelling. So we did all the right things. So I went upstairs to have these pills, and then, which is where the bedroom is, and then came back downstairs to go to the toilet because I was like, I really don't feel well. I think I had diarrhea. Jeremy came down and was like, do you need a bucket? And I was like, as in to take upstairs. I was like, no, no, I'll be fine. Actually, yeah, go on, take a bucket. Why not? Like, it doesn't harm. Take a bucket, but I'm going straight to bed. Went back upstairs. And I was laying in bed and like I said, Jeremy had a work call. So as he was connecting, I was laying in bed and I was just like, oh, I don't feel all right. I don't feel all right. And he was meant to be on this work call and I was like, Jeremy, come over here. 
and I felt like my heart was racing, like it felt like going, like it felt like it was going doo, 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 doo. like it just felt like it was going really, really fast. And also I felt like my face was burning, like it felt like my cheeks and my forehead was just like really, really hot and red. So I was like, Jeremy, come over here, you need to check on me. So he measured my heart rate and said, no, it's fine, it's the same as me, like your heart rate is normal. I was like, okay. And then what about my face? And he was like, no, your temperature feels fine. You don't look red. I think you're okay. And I was just like, I'm really not okay. <laughs> and then as we were laying down, as I was laying down in the bed, um, my, was it my right arm? One of my arms, I think it was my right arm, started getting pins and needles and started kind of going tingly and numb and felt weird all the way down my hand, all the way down my arm. And I was just like, no, cause now my arm's going weird. I don't like this at all. I really don't feel well. I really don't feel well. And so Jeremy's like, okay, you're fine, like calm down, let's like, you know, you'll be all right kind of thing. And then suddenly I was like, I need to go to the toilet. I need to run downstairs. So I got out of bed, crouched on the floor, and then my other arm was then going. So it felt like I had really numb, but like really tingly arms. I felt really hot. I felt like my heart was pounding. Like I felt so ill. And there's like a door that like leads, like entrance into the top. So I opened the door and I sat on like two steps and I was, Jeremy was behind me holding the bucket and I was like, Mm, 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 mm. And he was like, yeah, I've got the bucket. And I was like, no, mm, I need it, I need it. So I was like grabbing the bucket. Eventually he realized and passed me the bucket just in time because then I threw up loads in the bucket. Um, ended up being like, okay, shit, now I need to go to the toilet. I was also, <laughs> I can't believe I'm gonna put this online. But I, I was like running down the stairs whilst also feeling dizzy and sick and horrific. So I was trying not to run so I didn't wanna fall. Got down to the bottom of the steps just between the bathroom and the steps basically. And I thought I was gonna throw up. So I stood there and went mm -hmm, like that, like I retched. And as I retched, I shat myself, like actually shat myself. Um, <laughs> so then I went to the toilet and I was like on the toilet pooping and Jeremy had a bucket and I was being sick at the same time. And it was just like coming out everywhere. And I was crying that cause I was saying to Jeremy, I was like, I'm so sorry. I hate being sick. I hate being ill. Joe was like, it's fine. Like you're fine. So anyway, I ended up spending however long on the toilet, doing all my business. And then once I, and as soon as I'd thrown up and pooped everything out, I felt way better. So I was like, okay, I'm starting to feel all right now. And then Jeremy was wearing like a, a vest top. And as he was, I don't know, washing his hands or doing something, I noticed that his shoulder had like a red rash on it. And I was like, do you feel all right? And he was like, yeah, why? And I was like, you've got a rash on your shoulder. And he was like, oh, it's nothing. And I was like, no, I think you should have, I think we should have a look at that. So he took his top off and like all across his chest and his shoulders and his back and like his neck as well, like coming up to like on his chest and his neck was like a big red rash. And I was like, oh my God, Jeremy, like that is not normal. Do you feel okay? And he was like, well, I'm a bit warm, but I feel all right. And I was like, okay, we've obviously got food poisoning here, both of us, it's not just me. Um, you're gonna have to make yourself sick. So he went to the toilet to like see if he could poop out. He didn't. So I was like, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to make yourself sick because otherwise I'm gonna have to take you to the hospital like this isn't normal, you don't usually have a big red rash. So he was then making himself sick, which then as he was doing that was making me, <laughs> was making me wretch as well. Cause when you, when you hear someone be sick, it's bad anyway, but when you're already like sick yourself. So anyway, he ended up making himself sick and then instantly felt better as well. And like instantly his rash went and it was just like, it totally cleared up. And it was kind of crazy. So then we, obviously he didn't have his work call. We went to bed early, like relaxed for the next day or two. I don't think I vlogged for a couple of days. And then like the next day I was looking online at like what the heck was going on, like food poisoning, fish poisoning. And it turns out we had histamine poisoning, which I've never heard of, never experienced before in my life. But it's basically where fish can get more and more histamine in the flesh. I don't fully understand it if I'm totally honest, but I think it's when you keep fish out of the fridge so obviously the first night I think it was fine because we'd had it the first day we got the fish, but if the fish hadn't been kept properly refrigerated from when it was caught in the morning to when we bought it, and then the histamine was just growing and growing and growing. And also when we were in Sri Lanka, we were getting power cuts. So say for example, if we had a power cut in the night and our fridge turned off, we wouldn't have known, but it would have, you know, could have been a couple of hours sat in the fridge without the fridge on. So I don't know if it was because of the fisherman, I don't know if it was because of a power cut and the fridge didn't work. I don't know what it was. Also the second night we had it a little bit raw because you know how tuna you can just cook the outside and have the inside raw. We did have it a little bit raw. So probably a combination, but either way we had histamine poisoning. I'm gonna leave the symptoms on the side here because my symptoms was basically all of them apart from the rash and Jeremy was none of them apart from the rash. So I had like dizziness, sickness, overheating, um, diarrhea, 
I can't remember what, like everything on here basically. And then Jeremy had the rash and then obviously made himself sick. So we did not buy fish afterwards while we were in Sri Lanka. And my advice is maybe to get enough for one meal if you're feeling brave, um, but maybe don't risk it just because I felt so ill. Like I hate being sick and I felt so, so ill. So that's the fun um, food poisoning story. Luckily that's the only one we've had in six months. So we've been doing all right, but I just, I did think it was funny. I think it's worth sharing because it was just awful. Anyway, thank you for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed that story time and I hope to see you back here for more videos. <laughs> Bye.